But but I'm happy to connect. I'm happy to connect and to bring the views of uh, the social and human science sector. Uh, this forum, the South African Regional Forum of Artificial Intelligence, is really uh, a place to be. You heard uh, all the previous speakers how important it has been in the construction in bringing everybody together, in bringing all the countries, all the ministers, and, and to bring in this African perspective of how you want to deal with artificial intelligence, because this is what we are here for, to learn the African way, to learn how we can build up with our instruments, with our knowledge, with our what we want, with what we want to bring, but really uh, following uh, the, the, the African way. And for that, let me tell you something. Uh, we have in the public two very important uh, people. Uh, first, we have the chair of the ethics committees in, in, uh, in the governmental council of the ethics committees, Imo or Renovu. Uh, and also, we have uh, the chair of the expert group that elaborated the recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence, Emma Rutan So, again, uh, it, it has uh, Namibia and you have uh, South Africa. Uh, and they were core to the elaboration of the recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence uh, for UNESCO. So big applause about uh, that presence and that uh, contribution that was made. Lindy also mentioned uh, artificial intelligence, new technologies, emerging technologies, innovation trial, uh, the implementation of the recommendation are part of, uh, of the flagships, the five flagships, because we also have uh, four other uh, flagships of Africa. But this one was decided by the operational strategy for Priority Africa as one of the most important contributions that UNESCO can make for uh, the countries that are gathered uh, today with us. And this is cross sectors. You have in the public, again, representatives not only from my sector, uh, you have Iraq Nicodelli and Maria Ignacio Cucharini, but you also have representatives from all the other uh, sectors. And, and the obvious is that artificial intelligence is pervasive. Uh, we know that this uh, impressive capacity of computing systems to harvest data, to make analytical outputs in a, in a really short time compared to human intelligence, is driving not only the day-to-day -day businesses of everybody by choosing recommended systems or by uh, traveling uh, with, this, with this information, but it's also defining how do we shape our economies, how do we shape our societies, who goes to the university, who receives, receives a loan. More and more decisions are being taken with the support of artificial intelligence, and it's not transparent enough. Uh, in, in Africa, the artificial intelligence is being used to leap crop on the banking systems, to manage crop and land use, AI, for example, delivered great service during the disaster recovery uh, on the cyclones Idai and Kenneth uh, in Mozambique in 2019. It was impressive how much drones and AI were able to identify where to deliver aid. And these things are not known, but the reality is that the, the gains and the, and the efficiency that could be really harvested for artificial intelligence was huge, and so many people served, were served in these very difficult times for Mozambique. During the COVID time, the African Canadian Artificial Intelligence and Data Innovation Consortium has been leveraging big data and AI based technologies in nine African countries, including many other important services and sectors. And we believe that if it is well used, well implemented, artificial intelligence can really help us achieve the NCTs. It can really help us to be more efficient related with energy. It can help us to bring more uh, learning to, to our children. But we know that uh, not everybody has benefited from the benefits of digitalization. The problem is that this transformation is just repeating the patterns of inequality, discrimination, and many other ills that we know from the other world. There is also the fact that for the big players in this, in this uh, uh, technological drive, uh, competitiveness, geopolitical issues, uh, competition issues, have been driven the, driven the development instead of how do we enhance the universal values and principles that bring us together, as by Chancellor Nama uh, mentioned. And for once, uh, there exists a very high concentration of an economic dominance in these sectors. We know that much of this technology is currently concentrated in the hands of few countries, principally in the North. 
of course, there have been many developments in many countries in Africa as it's a, it's a setting of very dynamic tribe. But the reality is that this high concentration brings also some problems of discriminatory traits and so exclusions that we need to uh, underscore. And also to, to, to ask us the question, who is shaping this digital transformation? Is Africa well represented? I am Mexican, I also make the question, is Latin America well represented? Are all developing countries well represented? And this is something that UNESCO has been really committed to, to ensure that we don't lose the cultural diversity that we have all around the world. And we also know that artificial intelligence can cause harm. I'm not talking about abuses in the use of AI or the misuse for dual purposes of AI. I'm just talking whenever there is an unintentional damage caused because of the uh, biases or stereotyping uh, prejudice that just come to the, to the digital world. And, and for once, we know, for example, that women are underrepresented. I'm glad that there is a panel of women. Uh, in South Saharan Africa, only 20% of women are linked or uh, to the ICT sector, and therefore, no wonder their views, their contributions, the diversity that they can bring is not present, and this is something we need uh, to, to fix. And then the question of data is another area of concern. Why? Because we know that data is a new raw material that is allowing for uh, developing new innovations, new processes, and therefore, those that own the data, that can leverage the data, that can train the data, are the ones that are going to be well placed to position new products, new services, and new and new contributions in this uh, digital transformation. Uh, but not everybody has data, and therefore, this is a really important point. UNESCO and its member states, as have been said, uh, agree that artificial intelligence might be shaping our today and our future, but it will be the ethics that determine whether it is for better and for worse. UNESCO is the only international institution that has an, the ethics as a mandate, the ethics of science. I think that I'm very happy about that because I'm in UNESCO, but the reality is that ethics is the, everybody's business and should be in all the institutions. But members decided it's UNESCO that has this uh, novel uh, mandate. But ethics should never be viewed as just another factor to consider in creative frameworks for AI developments and use, or as an afterthought. You never take decisions and then you say, okay, was that ethical? No. You always said, okay, where are the ethical considerations? And then you take decisions. And this is the call, not to let the digital transformation use the wrong solo and try then to fix it with a little bit of ethics here and a little bit of ethics there. Ethics represent an encompassing construction fundamentally directing the type of technological progress that we want to achieve. It, it gives direction to innovation and competition to this uh, uh, drive to ensure it is consistent with our human values and principles. And it actually allows that for any technological uh, uh, transformation uh, contributes to sustainability in our economic, social, and environmental fields. And this is done through regulation, through policies, and the recommendation is very strong, not only on the principles, but also on the policies and the decisions, the institutions that need to be put in place to ensure that we are not lagging behind the technological uh, track. One hundred, uh, again, Namibia, South Africa, and, and, the, and the two chairs that contribute to it, but to all the, all the countries that are represented, all the members of the African states that were so engaged in the negotiations and in the definition. And that's why uh, the uh, recommendation of ethics of artificial intelligence is having such a great impact. And actually, I'm, gonna, I'm glad to share with you that, that we have decided that for, for the African implementation part, because members have also decided that they want to have regional uh, focus for the implementation, uh, we have decided, of course, that the SAFRI forum was the right place to launch the, the, the implementation of the recommendation, and we will have an event with uh, several of the ministers that will be participating. Um, we thank again the, the Japanese uh, the Development Corporation because they, they are uh, providing the support for uh, this uh, work to be advanced in Africa. We are going to be uh, putting together a full fledged program on turning the promise of the recommendation into reality for the benefits of all our people. 
Um, we are looking at the specific ways at operationalizing principles that you might know already of transparency, of accountability, of explainability uh, of the rule of law. Uh, and these are issues that are very well explained in the recommendations but that are essential to reap the full benefits of artificial intelligence. The recommendation does not only call for controlling the risk uh, development or risky development. If, and, and I want to recognize there the presence of the ambassador of the European Union, with whom we are also working uh, with the risk-based approach. But it maintains a focus on all the stages of the AI systems. And this is crucial because bias and discrimination experiences by AI users are often products of the structural inequalities of an exclusion upstream. If you have 85% of all AI developments being done by male only teams from the north, no wonder why we have these biases that we experience all over the place. We are also worried of the potential adverse impact that AI technologies can have on our children, on our democracies, and on the question of disinformation exponentially dividing uh, societies. And therefore, the recommendation takes a strong stance on several issues. For example, if the only instrument worldwide that bans social scoring or massive, massive surveillance. By governments, by companies, it's just banned, and this needs to be delivered. Particular attention is also paid to the psychological and cognitive impact of these systems uh, on our children, on young people, on women. Member states should also invest in and promote digital media and information literacy skills to strengthen critical thinking and competencies. And I know this is something that our colleagues in the sector of CI are advancing. The recommendation suggests a strong policy actions on the management of data, privacy, and access to information. It sets rules for giving users control over their own data. And this is very easy to say, but you that are in charge of ensuring that data is not abused is not as easy. And that's why it's so important that we discuss these things with you and with the ministers to look for solutions that are practical and that can allow for innovation to happen while controlling these downside risks. It further calls on member states to ensure that appropriate safeguards and effective accountability schemes are put in place for the processing of sensitive data. This system therefore allows for redress of mechanisms in the event of harm. And I can tell you, as I've been dealing with digital issues for the last 20 years, I, I could not believe that we would include and approve and put to the world an instrument that is saying you should compensate. And it looks like the ABC of the rule of law, well, it doesn't happen all the time. It's very difficult to allocate responsibility and, and to really help uh, platforms or users accountable when there is harm. And therefore, this strengthening of the rule of law is one of the most important contributions of the recommendation. Privacy is just one aspect of the whole AI agenda. I know that privacy has been always signaled as one of the most important issues, but fairness is too. Who takes the decision? How do they take the decision? How do it affect you? Even in very advanced countries like the Netherlands, when they use the algorithm to show how much uh, social benefits were well distributed, it discriminated a lot, a lot of uh, migrants and, and people of different uh, backgrounds, and therefore it's really important. And given that AI has the potential to perpetuate inequality and discrimination, a specific focus in the recommendation is given to uh, vulnerable groups, misrepresented groups, developing countries, gender. There is a very strong gender uh, chapter, not to say that we are worried because women are not present, just to come with very concrete policy recommendations. And I call ministers, you sign up to dedicate resources to female activities related to AI, you sign up to dedicate budgets, you sign up to have AI strategies that include the gender chapter and that are framed on the ethical uh, the inputs. And therefore, this is a call for uh, trying to get together and see how are you doing it and how we can uh, move ahead with this very important decision that you took. The other part, developing countries. We need the global south, we need Africa. The instrument now recognize that developing countries have capacities and opportunities that they can bring together but have been underrepresented of the AI world. And this raises concerns. 
because we are neglecting local knowledge, cultural pluralism, value systems, and the demands of global fairness to deal with the positive and negative impacts of AI technologies. I was very proud that given the very uh, inclusive way in which the recommendation was done, we were inspired by the Ubuntu philosophy. And this is the most impressive African contribution in terms of how to live in peace and how to be a partner only of the human community, but the, but the, but the environment, the planet. And then we have various policy actions to minimize uh, the risk from providing platforms to international cooperation on AI development, uh, expertise, funding data, domain knowledge, connecting with the institutions that are leading in the, in the regions. I was happy to have this conversation with the Vice Chancellor of the South African University. Uh, we are receiving a lot of uh, requests from many institutions all around the continent, uh, from uh, consultants, from experts, from uh, universities, and this is really important because we want to have, as we give the recommendation in an inclusive manner, to have it also in an inclusive manner implemented. Uh, there are two tools that we are developing uh, with the support of, of Japan, the readiness assessment methodology and the ethical impact assessment and we will be launching the implementation uh, on uh, tomorrow with the, with the several ministers, and I welcome them, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Namibia, uh, South Africa, and, uh, and many other countries that will be there. But of course, you are all invited, because at the end, it's 193 countries that need to implement it. We are going to have a global forum on the ethics of artificial intelligence, the Czech Republic under the European uh, uh, leadership that they have, the presidency, are going to call it in December, and they want to have a big section in Africa. And I feel that this forum is going to be also informing what kind of progress we can make in the, in the global context of these issues. And then we have 70 members that are part of the Friends Group, and I want to invite all the, the African countries that are not already part of this Friends Group to come in, uh, because we need your voices, we need your expertise, uh, we need your engagement, and of course we need your support. The regional conference is, a, is an important milestone in the journey towards greater and more cohesive global AI governance. Over the next day, I'm confident that the forum will produce excellent outcomes. The beauty of multilateralism is that we can hear from each other, we can learn from each other, there are best practices in all the countries. Every single country can have the best practice to show. And they can have many others to learn from each other. We want to document them, we want to analyze them. We don't want to prevent them. We just want to learn from you. But we want your support in advancing this very important milestone that you achieve when adopting the recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence at UNESCO. I am confident that through this forum and beyond, South Africa will emerge as a shining example of what we can accomplish with, with a shared vision and coordinated action. So thank you so much. I hope to see you in person tomorrow. Uh, we'll see, finger crossed.